Hello there. Um, welcome back to um, the second episode of What Katie Saw. What Katie Saw tonight was a mystery to me until I got there. And the reason for that is because it was part of the Odeon's screen unseen thingy. So if you are unaware of this, you pay less. In my case, you don't pay anything because I'm a limitless um, subscriber, as I said last night. But... I think it's five pound a ticket and you you go in blind you don't know what you're going to see it's always a new film something that's not out yet but they range quite widely from more art housey type vibes to very mainstream things uh i think in january one of the films was vice um most recently at our local audio it was if beale street could talk i didn't see either of them but tonight i went along with my friend who's also a limitless um subscriber and we saw wild rose and we cried a lot now wild rose is the story of a glaswegian girl who dreams of nashville so if you are not a fan of country music give it a miss if you are a fan of gritty storylines heartache triumph pain joy, music, all that sort of shizzle, then you need to see this film. Um, I'm, I, I'm kind of aware that I'm not giving <laughs> the most articulate review. Um, I am not long back from the cinema and my head's still sort of buzzing, but I kind of wanted these videos to be, this is my immediate reaction to the film. So I've had the drive home and the time it took to make me a cup of tea to digest it. So it is directed by a chap called Tom Harper, British director, who has worked on the likes of Peaky Blinders and on the BBC adaptation of War and Peace. It's written by Nicole Taylor. And the star of the show, in all senses of the word, is an incredible actress and singer called Jessie Buckley. Now then... I went to see this film and I, I knew that Wild Rose was one of the films it might be. I didn't know a huge amount about it. Very early on, as soon as she opened her mouth and sang, I was like, yes, I'm in. This is for me. Sign me up. Um, I love country music. I'm a really big fan of modern country music. Um, so things like Casey Musgraves, Marin Morris, uh, Carrie Underwood, all that sort of um, jazz, not jazz, country. Um, and as it finished... As I was doing this, ugh, getting rid of all the tears and snot, nice. Um, I said to my friend, oh, I wonder if that's really her singing. So I did a quick Google, not with two thumbs. Nobody types with two. I did this because that's how we Google things on phones. Um, and what I discovered blew my mind. Cast your minds back, ladies and gents, um, over 10 years ago to 2008 when um, Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber went on the telly box to find himself a Nancy. That came out really wrong. And if you don't remember the TV show, I Do Anything, that sounded horrendous. But back then, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber decided to go a less traditional route to finding leading ladies and gentlemen and did um, like TV star searches, I guess. So the first one was um, to find a Maria. I think it was called How Do You Solve a Problem Like Maria, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, and that found um, Connie What's Her Face. I can't remember her surname. Um, but it found her, and she was Maria. And I think the second one was I'd Do Anything. And it was to find somebody to play Nancy, the part of Nancy, in a revival of Oliver. And my favourite Nancy all the way through was Irish Nancy, um, a.k.a. Jessie Buckley. So when I looked up, this red-haired Scottish, or so I thought, um, singer, and I found out that she was the curly-haired Irish girl from I'd Do Anything, my brain went... Brrr. I mean, it all makes sense now, because she had a fair set of pipes on her then, and she's only got better with age. And my God, what an actress! Because I remember back on I'd Do Anything, um, when they were trying to get her to talk in, um, in a Cockney accent... She struggled somewhat, but now, holy moly, and haven't had a look um, at what she's been up to. She's been in lots of BBC stuff, um, War and Peace and Taboo and 
all manner of other things. But her performance in this film is just outstanding. Um, she goes through so much and you go through it right with her. And weirdly, last night I was talking about um, the kid who must... Who should, the, the, I'm so emotional. The kid who could be king? Kid who... This is bad. I can't remember the full title of the film I went to see last night. Some bloody film critic I am. Um, the king who, the kid who would be king. Um, and I was talking about that. Um, it, it, it touched on how difficult it is to be a parent. This film tonight did that and then some, which is why I did a considerable amount of weeping. Um, so you've got this woman who is young, has definitely made some mistakes the film starts i'm not giving too much away it starts with her getting out of prison she's been in prison for a year and she goes home to her mother played by the ever excellent julie walters who i would very much like to be my mom please um and her mum has been looking after um, her children rose's children um for a year while she's been banged up and it's watching that struggle of her readjusting to life as a mother still wanting to chase this dream of being a singer, wanting to get out to Nashville. Um, and you can really see that struggle as she does adjust to becoming a mum and gets better at it, but then there's still this pull to to be Rose and to be what she believes she was put on this earth to be. She, she uses a brilliant line when she says that some people are born transgender and they're born in the wrong body, feeling like they should be one thing when they're the other. And... She says that's how she feels, that she should have been born American because it's it's in our blood. That's what she wants to do. And she conveys that so beautifully, this conflict between the life you've got and the life you dream of and which is richer. I won't give much more than that away. There are some cracking performances in it. Um, she is the standout by a... <laughs> I was going to say by a country mile. No pun intended. Um... But she's incredible. She's absolutely incredible. I found out she helped to write the songs for the film. Her voice in the film is just breathtaking. There is a teeny tiny cameo from none other than um, country superstar Casey Musgraves, who's a huge favourite of mine. Um, also, great performance from the incredibly beautiful and talented um, Sophie Ocanado. She was brilliant in it as well. Um, it's not for everybody. Like I say, if you don't like country music and gritty British dramas or British Scottish dramas, then give it a swerve. But if that is your vibe, then you need to jump on board this vibe train because it was fantastic. I've definitely been through the ringer. Um, I'm definitely a little bit emotional. Um, but it's nice when a film can kick you square in the feels like that or kick you in the um, heart nuts, to use an expression I once read on Twitter that Simon Pegg said. Um, it did definitely kick me in the heart nuts. So that is Wild Rose um, in cinemas very soon. I'm not sure when. Oh, April, says IMDb, which is open behind me. Um, or behind you, rather. Um, so that's out in April. Uh, definitely give it a watch. It was very, very good. I liked it a lot. I like the idea of not knowing what I was going to see. I don't know what I'm going to see next. I don't know what I've got lined up. But um, if you hit subscribe, she says, not really knowing how that works, then you will be alerted when I post a video. So um, I'll get this uploaded. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Um, I'll add it to the other one and start to build a little library. So as films come out, you can have a little search and say, ooh, I wonder, I wonder what Katie said when she went to see this. So, um, yeah, that's that, I guess. Wild Rose tonight, big thumbs up from me. Um, if you are prone to a good weep, take tissues. I was a gigantic snotty mess, but I did enjoy it immensely. So that is my uh, review of Wild Rose done. Um, I will catch you all soon. Thank you and good night. <laughs>